In this quick start tutorial lesson, we will walk through the process of setting up a nighttime exterior render for an ArcViz workflow using V-Ray Next for SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp Pro 2019, and I'll be working in the project labeled 022 Exterior Lighting Night Start, which you can download from the link in the description of this video. Let's begin by taking a look at what is already set up in the project, and then I'll walk you through a workflow for creating nighttime lighting. First, in the V-Ray Asset Editor, Head to the Render Settings, and let's make sure that the Material Override switch is toggled on. This way, we can focus more carefully on the lighting without any distractions from our materials. Now let's go ahead and start an interactive render. Also, note that we have the NVIDIA AI Denoiser on as well, so we can get noise-free results faster. As our preview loads, you'll see that some objects do not have their material overridden. For example, the glass material for the windows. If we head to the Materials tab, we can search for Glass, and if we select the Glass Window Neutral material, you'll see that a parameter that is normally on by default, called Can Be Overridden, has already been unchecked for us. Any materials with this setting unchecked will not be overridden by the Material Override. This is useful for transparent materials like glass, so that we can do a clay render and still see inside the interior of our house through the windows. For a night scenario especially, this will come in handy when we want to play with the lights inside the house later, in order to add some warmth to the image. Okay, if we head to the Lights tab, you'll see that our image is currently lit by a dome light with an HDRI loaded in its color texture slot. Let's click on the texture slot, then on the folder file path, and swap in a different image. I'm going to load in an HDRI called The Sky is on Fire 4K, and give it a moment for V-Ray to update in the interactive render. As you can see, the image is tremendously overexposed, so let's click on the dome light's intensity value here and lower it down to 1. That's looking much better already. Now let's head to the texture placement settings of the HDRI so we can tweak the rotation. I'm going to set its rotation to 150. Again, let's give the interactive render a moment just to see how that looks. And alright, I'm happy with that. Now we can move on to place some lights around in our project and make the image a bit more interesting and lifelike. Let's stop the interactive render, close the VFB, and the asset editor. Then, let's zoom in the perspective here so we can take a closer look at the exterior lights on our house. Now, from the V-Ray Lights toolbar, let's select the V-Ray Sphere Light and then click and drag to place it above the wall lamp. Next, select the Sphere Light and then select the Move tool and let's use that to lower the lamp into position inside the cylinder. I'm then going to duplicate the sphere light to the other wall lamp fixtures on the exterior of our house by holding the control key while clicking on the light with the move tool. Okay. Once I've got these in position here for all the lights, let's head back over to the front of the house again and take a look at the windows. In front of the windows here, let's select this rail and then apply a V-Ray Mesh Light to it by clicking on Convert to V-Ray Mesh Light. This way, when we render the image, the rail geometry will emit light, acting as an outdoor porch lamp for our house. Now let's double click on the render camera scene to return to our render view and move forward. Back in the Asset Editor, you can see that I have already created and prepared a few other lights for this project in a similar fashion. I've named them respective to their location to keep things organized, and they're also all turned off except the dome light. Let's go ahead and switch off the new lights we created as well. This way, we can turn on and tweak our lights one by one, so that we can better understand their contribution to the image. Alright, now let's start an interactive render. I'm going to draw a small render region around the front porch windows for a faster preview of this area. Then, let's turn the interior light back on and start adjusting its settings. At first, we can't really see anything. That's because its intensity is far too low. Let's try increasing it in increments, starting with something like 5000. There's no exact science behind this. You may simply need to test out a few different values and get a feel for them, before narrowing in on what looks aesthetically pleasing. I think a value of 10,000 looks right for an interior light in the house. 
Let's also click its color swatch in the asset editor to change its color to a nice warm orange and make this setting feel a bit more homely and cozy. Okay, now let's move forward to tweak the mesh light that we created. I'm gonna draw another render region around the general area of the mesh light, and then let's switch it on from the asset editor. It's also not strong enough at first, so let's crank up the intensity to something like 3000. Now, let's do something different this time to tweak its color. If we click on its color texture slot, we can add a temperature texture. This will enable us to set the color of the light using a temperature value in the Kelvin scale. I think a value of around 2300 Kelvin complements the interior lighting quite nicely, so let's leave it at that. Now, let's draw a new render region on the left side of the house for a faster preview, and then let's adjust the other lights following the same workflow. Once again, I'll give them the appropriate intensity and the same warm color that we applied to the interior light. An easy way to do this is to simply right click on the color swatch in the asset list, click copy, and then right click on the color swatch for the other light and choose paste. This way, we'll have even and consistent lighting in our overall render result without any conflicting color tones. As you can see, the general idea here for the look I'm going for is to create a nice contrast between an evening themed exterior using the natural light from an HDRI and some simple warm artificial lighting. Now, I'm also going to draw a render region on the bottom right here, and let's enable the garden sphere lights and tweak them as well. These will help to give the lower third of our composition a bit more contrast and lighting. Similarly, I'll draw a render region on the left over the grass and enable the rectangle garden lamps and tweak them. Overall, these ground lights will help to make our image more aesthetically pleasing by creating some more light, shadows, and contrast in areas beyond just the exterior and interior of our house. All right, now that we have set up the lighting for our image, let's turn off the interactive render for a moment and disable the render region. Then, let's head to the render settings and switch the material override off so that we can see how our image looks with all our materials applied. Now let's start another interactive render. Okay, I'm liking how that looks. If you'd like, you're welcome at this point to tweak anything else in the project before preparing to do a final production render. When you're happy with your interactive preview, let's stop the interactive render and prepare our settings for production. I'm gonna turn off the interactive switch and make sure my quality setting is on high. Then, let's set the resolution to 1600 by 720 in the render output settings. Finally, Let's switch the denoiser engine from the NVIDIA AI denoiser to the default V-Ray denoiser. Okay, once you're ready, we can go ahead and press render. And there you go. Now you've completed a final production render of an exterior night setting using Viri Next for SketchUp. As a final step, don't forget to save the render result to your hard drive by clicking on the little disk icon at the top of the VFB.